Hey y'all, welcome back to another video here. Thank you for joining me for the, another segment. Uh, so this is the last part in the three-part section here of everything I've done so far. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Uh, for sure, this is the last one here, so just grab yourself a cup of coffee or a cup of another cup of tea, and we're just going to dive right into it. All right, so here we go. So these here, I'm just going to show in rapid fire. Um, these are the, the proofs that I made for like some of the uh, prints that I've made for myself. Uh, some people might recognize these from Instagram maybe, but uh, I'm just going to kind of go through them real quick. These are only like the proofs of like the failed prints themselves, but um, the other ones are kind of uh, stored away at the moment, so I'm just going to show these. Um, these in itself were uh, my first kind of attempts at working a <laughs> my printer that I have here. Um, I only show these because it's like, I kind of like the, I like the images themselves, not necessarily the quality of the prints, but, um, I don't know, I'm really, I, the, I, I still kind of somewhat attached to these images just because it was like, again, that like fresh start of just trying to figure these things out and like new programs and new projects. Um, but then there was a couple that I'm really happy with the drawings and it was the idea of, um, trying different mediums and then trying different ways of like expanding how I could use them. So like um, this one here just started as a simple ink drawing and then um, the pug here was the just a simple ink drawing in a sketchbook that I was like thinking that either I could just kind of make it a solid tone, turn them into my own stickers, um, which is kind of something I might do here in the future. Um, but yeah, and then there was the the idea of like kind of taking fan art, which I'm kind of, I'm weary of, like I won't do, but this project here was just a fun one for me because um, it was kind of taking again that the idea of just uh, transitioning one of my drawings and figuring out through a program how to color over it. And you can tell here, <laughs> if you looked closely, you can tell here that I made the mistake of basically taking the initial layer, which is kind of a no-no, um, taking the initial layer of the drawing and then just going to the second layer and literally just coloring over the top. And you can see how the blacks are, um, the black tones are basically just washed out because it's literally just color overlaid the top, um, which in the, <laughs> it's not something that you necessarily want to do. But yeah, um, I just wanted to show these because I, I really like the drawings themselves again. Um, and it's just like, I, sometimes I really wish that it would be cool to just kind of like, I don't know, be able to just kind of like make stickers of this, but you know, licensing and trademarking and all that legality kind of puts a damper on that. But yep, we're gonna move on real quick. So this one here is another um, recycled project. Uh, I didn't really have an initial idea about this one. I, it was kind of like a very poor quality print that was made. It was an etching that was done, um, again, back from uh, when I was in school. And I ended up adding like a layer of acrylic and like um, gold ink over the top and then just kind of added more etching to it as I went to kind of make it seem like it was always intentional that way. Um, the overall quality of the paper, it's just so dirty and mucky from the way it was stored and the grease, like, um, you can see that it said it was redone in 2015. Um, just like, I remember initially wanting to sell this or like trying to recreate it, but then I'm like thinking about it and I like the idea, but then I, it was when <laughs> I really thought about it, not like looking past quality that I realized it's uh, almost like I took the idea, ripped it straight from uh, my neighbor Totoro because I'm like, wait, this is, a, I know this is a camper in the middle of the woods, but like, I can't help but thinking of the cat with a bus, but. So these are another um, attempt at Copic drawings. Uh, um, it was actually, I wonder if I put the dates on them. Again, I'm really bad at that and it didn't look like I did. Um, they were another attempt at trying out Copic markers, which Again, I'd like to do in the future. I, I like the flat quality that they're able to um, be able to create. Like, they're just so nice and the colors are so rich, but you can tell if you look, are able to look closely that like there's a lot of that, um, a lot of marks show through that shouldn't be there. Like, again, I have no idea how some people are able to capably like make smooth marks 
so that they're like they transition and like um, the shading isn't really nicely but um, I thought these were really nice they're I kind of piece them together into a project that I was like well I guess I could try to make a print of this but in the end I was like well I could sell them but I, I don't have any intention in the future as of right now to try to do that but yeah I just thought these are fun and festive especially for right now this one here was like a, a quick uh, painting that I did for Inktober um, I really kind of like the the quality of it but at the same time um, I never finished it and for something about it just didn't like I don't know I didn't really like the way it turned out especially like how um, this in here didn't really turn out the way I want it to. I know that I could probably work with it and then, you know, make it into something that I liked, but the idea was just kind of like a, um, originally it was sort of like a forest nymph that was kind of like turning into autumn colors, but you can tell that I went too saturated with yellows and I, was, I that's where it kind of threw me off that I was like, I don't know. I didn't really like the way it turned out. Um, but yeah, um, that's all there is for this one. So this one's rather large. Um, <laughs> it's a print from one of my um, print classes. Uh, I absolutely, even though it was um, the process of making it itself is very simple, um, taking the pieces that I made and then very, very so obviously just cutting in layers and placing it on top of each other. Uh, for the pieces itself, like in the future, um, for like cutouts, I would like to make them more seamless and not just like, like you could even tell that I didn't take too much time and like even just cutting the piece itself, I just cut the circle around it instead of like the creating the full boundary. Um, something about this, uh, even at the time, I really enjoyed the effect and quality of it. Um, this was really my first introduction into like manipulating digital mediums. So, um, I forget what the class is called, it was my junior year, but just the overall effect and the quality of it, the idea behind it was the uh, Fountain of Youth, and I guess this was an attempt at trying to be um, illustrating the scene a little bit. Our lives are here now, don't be distracted by what could or even should be, press forward and appreci appreciate how privileged you truly are. The overall, again, the overall effect and quality, I would love to return to this idea, and uh, the idea is just to kind of be more illustrative and turn to like storybook type ideas. I like it. So I don't know. I, <laughs> I had a better description in my head, but we're gonna move on. Spent enough time on this. This one here is another large one. Um, it's a woodblock print that I did on um, rice paper. Um, it was a woodblock etching. Uh, I remember using a picture out of one of my art history books of I think Leonardo da Vinci's one of his pieces. And then I decided to just automatically draw something and stylize it. And what I came up with was kind of interesting. It's obviously not representational of <laughs> exact human form, but I, something about it just really kind of stuck with me. Um, I made a project with this. Um, initially was my, one of my, or a project in my senior show um, but the original of that ended up becoming damaged and destroyed eventually, so I don't really have record of it. But then I ended up using another one of these just recently and cutting it out and then using it. Since I had so many of these, um, I ended up cutting it out and then using it for something else. Um, but yeah, this is the, the one that I'm going to be keeping and uh, pretty much keeping in a portfolio here. But. So this next one is the same. You can tell it's kind of damaged because I don't have a means of uh, proper storage, but um, it is another woodblock print on um, another sheet of rice paper, but this one ties into, um, again, that idea of trying to, trying to come up with a story or illustrating a story with a lot of the work that I was trying to experiment with. Uh, this one is uh, based on one of the vices of greed. Um, so you can't really tell too well, um, from the quality of the print itself, but it's just, uh, a chimp wearing, like, uh, pearls here while chewing on earrings and, uh, teeth falling out. So it's like the idea of, like, greed where you're, you know, 
that stereotype of a dream. Um, and then there's like strange flower, like floral things going on and like a bent crown, um, just to kind of like emphasize the ugliness of it, I guess, but um, nothing too deep, just the idea of grief in itself, I guess. For this one here, it is a, another um, drawing used for uh, Inktober, probably around the same time. Um, I don't even remember the words for them, but this character here is uh, one of my favorite characters from Final Fantasy IX. Uh, I just, ever since I was a kid, he's always been my favorite, and I couldn't tell you why. I just think it, I love his design so much. Um, I remember at the time thinking, like, uh, as a kid, like, belts that large and over the top of your face are used as, like, a headgear type thing was kind of absurd to me, and I'd never really seen something like that before, I don't think. But, um, yeah, I kind of thought that this illustration was perfect at the time. I remember uh, starting to play the game again, and this was one of the uh, illustrations that came along with the PlayStation um wallpaper there so I remember looking at it and be like hey I want to try this and just kind of basically cut and paste the figure itself and then just draw it and then have fun with it uh, I do love this little cat that I added here um <laughs> I'll zoom in real quick I just thought it was cute um I usually try to add like an element of that to each of my drawings it's just something a little absurd um and then just like a little black mage pumpkin but yeah I, I like the way that uh the figure itself kind of turned out and again I like the using the ink with, like, water media properties of diluting it with water and, you know, the huge. But, yeah, again, uh, Blank from Final Fantasy IX. He's just standing on a lamppost behind it, or in front of a bush. And then over here is just the moon and then a cat. And I just thought it was cool. So, anyway, we're going to move on. So, for this one, I was just practicing um, the uh, pushing the quality of the paper here. It's a marker paper. And I used... Uh, Copic markers here, but uh, drew with Micron first and then covered it in Copics. I like the way that it turned out. Like, I know it's d not necessarily um, exact when it comes to, <laughs> like, the way I look. It's like a self-portrait, but uh, I just, I don't know. I love the way that a lot of the Copic markers work. Like, especially on the paper itself, it's really pretty. Um, I could do a close-up, but I don't know if it'll do any justice. But I just thought it was really neat. Like, uh, the saturation of colors are just, I don't know, there's something about it. And I guess it's just kind of, it's kind of impressive that the markers itself are, like, the quality that they're at. And it makes sense that they've been, like, the number one marker for a long, long time. So, but yeah, I'm not much of a marker or Copic user. But I just kind of had this set, and I figured I'd try it out. And it, I thought it was pretty cool. I like them. So this is the one I was talking about here with uh, Bastion. Uh, for this one, it is 18 by 24. It's on watercolor paper. And the reason I decided to uh, do this one is because I'd never actually tried to use just normal um, colored pencils in such a long time. And I didn't have any other paper at the time. And I remember just looking at this pad and being like, okay, what's the worst that I could, could happen when trying to do this? But, um, Overall, I'd say I like the drawing itself, but overall I'd say I, the quality of having the colored pencil on it for me just doesn't do it. Um, I know, again, I'll just kind of do a quick zoom up here. So it's really hard to tell, but like it's super waxy in spots and I've never been able to figure out how to effectively use colored pencils. Like I've only just recently learned that people use like mineral spirits to kind of like add another effect or like kind of improve their drawings with it but like I don't know I'm not like too I'm not too savvy when it comes to that but um but yeah I'm not really like I, I like the drawing itself and I think it turned out pretty good for what it was but um definitely makes me think that I should practice more with colored pencils but some people are just so amazing with them I don't know how they come up with the quality that they do with when it comes to them but um yeah, so it's just the, uh, it's just Bastion with a bird's nest. It's kind of Ganymede's uh, bird nest up here, but he's kind of like gone at the moment. And then just playing with uh, geometry here in terms of a wave and then just a brick wall and yeah. But yeah, that's what it, it is what it is. I thought it was pretty cool. So this one, 
It is a large one. I think, I forget what the measurements are, but it's a piece of arches here. Um, I don't even think I can get it all in one frame. That works. That's pretty good. Um, the idea behind this one, uh, <laughs> I w this is a more recent one. I was thinking about how, uh, back to what I was saying about using every single color, I was just like, maybe I could do something with that then. Like, literally just flat out give you a rainbow to look at and just kind of see what happens. <laughs> so it's almost like the idea of embracing the color. <laughs> um, the initial idea was to, again, make this one for Tyler. Uh, he loves elephants and he loves color. So he was just like, hey, why not? So this is what I ended up coming up with. Uh, the arches paper itself, I have to say, I absolutely love hot press arches paper. The flat and fuzzy effect that you can get with it is just so super nice. The um, quality of it's really nice. I went over it in Micron Pen, again, you can see there, um, to form the wrinkles. And in there, you can see that I started stippling to kind of have a little play. So it's almost like uh, little rivers of wrinkles going on. But the, I don't know, I just, I love the overall effect and just the going over the uh, illustration in Micron is just so satisfying. And also too, uh, with this one, because it was just basically a spattering of uh, rainbow color, because it was just a play on spattering all the color everywhere, uh, I'm starting to like sort of trying to develop a style in the sense that like, I'm not obsessing over every last layer of watercolor that I put on there. Like, I want to keep in mind that I, I want to be able to maintain as much control as I can. But I, I started playing with the idea of literally just making certain spots dedicated to um, splashes of color and gradation. Like, in this one, it makes sense because it was the idea was basically just splashing it everywhere. But, like, again, it was trying to, like play as much as I could with control with like certain textures and the way that I was able to put the paint down. And this one is a fun one. Um, I did this one a while back. I don't know if there's a date on it. Probably not. I'm really bad when it comes to signing and dating things, by the way, as you might come to know. Um, this one's a fun one. Uh, I remember Tyler and I playing, uh, Pokemon a lot at the time, and two of his favorite Pokemon were uh, Crocodile and uh, Shroomish there. So I was like, well, I might as well try to play with something fun. Um, I The method behind this is I used to do this all the time, which I still kind of miss doing. I don't know why. I would make something on a separate sheet of paper, and then um, with that, I'd be able to create a surface and then just cut uh, with an X-Acto blade out on the other piece of paper the image and then just kind of like paste it over the top of it. It's kind of messy if it's not done correctly to me and you can get glue on the surface itself. So I was like, I don't know why I tend to go through like 10 hoops to do one simple thing rather than just painting onto the surface of the paper like everyone else. But I, I don't know. I like the idea of taking a physical copy of something and collaging it onto another thing. It's just for something, some reason, like that's so satisfying to me, and I feel like I could really come up with something in the future regarding that, but um, with this, it, it's literally, I think I called it, like, Pokemon DPS class, because it's just a sword and shield user with, like, a mage, um, but you can tell it was kind of made really, really quickly, because I didn't really, um, being that I can't, like, it was just kind of for fun and for experimentation, and I obviously can't do anything with this, so you can tell in, like, some spots, it's, like, the quality of the paint itself is like really watered down and like, I don't know what this, to, how to describe the feeling. It's like using too much water with very little pigment over and over and over. It tends to make that grainy effect and you can see like the paint breaking down. So um, long story short, it was just meant for fun, but I liked it. I liked the way it turned out. I thought it was pretty cool. You can even see <laughs> this is kind of why I like a flat file and this is kind of why I'm documenting things now and putting it away forever is because somehow I managed to get coffee on this. I don't know how, I don't know where, but there's a coffee stain. <laughs> so these next couple ones are pretty massive, but they're the largest ones I've done, I think, ever. But um, 
the one that you're seeing here is a submission I had for a alumni show for community college that I attended. The basic idea behind this one is kind of like just really kind of a light depiction of the fossil record, like what it would show if like just say a person was placed into the mud immediately, for example, and like in that moment of taking a selfie, like the idea of just an automatic sense of like the traces that we as humans have left behind in such a short period of time. Um, the concept is nothing new, but it's just kind of like our where our priorities lie with humanity at the moment is like consumption and um so you just kind of see like the overall just slightly effective of like plastics and just the waste combined with like the inevitable regrowth of nature kind of so that was just the initial idea the project itself is um basically watercolor paper that's been um, fastened to a canvas itself. At the time of making it, I wasn't really sure how I was gonna um, go about it. Like, cause I really would like, I love working really, really large because it allows me to place as much detail as I can into something. Um, but I also didn't have any paper at the time or the means of buying paper at the time that was like super large. So I had just taken what I had at the moment and just basically collaged it all together in um, the most, like, best quality that I could at the time. But I'm really happy with the project itself, um, and I'd love to be able to do something like this again in the future at this scale. So this next one is pretty massive as well. And again, I claim no rights to these characters here. Um, this one was made for... A friend of Tyler's who never ended up getting back to me about it but um, uh, the design itself was uh, I think a DC character with Mephisto with a Marvel character or um, uh, Dormammu um, and uh, Diablo from Blizzard um, but the idea itself was really really fun to play with um, you can see a lot of the a lot of it's just basically mixing my illustrative style with geometry and just all of the types of things I like to play with. Um, of course, with every just about every watercolor artist, there's a lot of like play with spaces, space and nebulas, and like um, just the bleeding effects. Uh, just the overall like quality of this is something I'm pretty proud of. Um, I like the, just, I don't know, again, I love just going in and just putting in like this massive amount of detail. Um, so the process itself is basically just uh, different watercolors, inks with micron pen and uh, all collaged again onto a canvas that I painted with acrylic to give it that like really solid backdrop and make it pop a little bit more. Um, and again, the idea is like, they're super rainbowy in color, but I think it kind of worked for this one. Um, I really like the way that it turned out again. It's just kind of a, it was just a lot of fun to make. And uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to, <laughs> in the end, it's like hard to find storage for all of these, but like, I think just, again, I get such joy out of working so large that it just kind of like, I don't know, it pays off in its own way, but yeah. So for this next one, it is one of the largest ones I've done on watercolor canvas here. Um, it is a Medusa-like figure that, uh, or a Gorgon, I guess, uh, that's just kind of like placed onto the canvas, um, just kind of like dead center. Uh, the idea behind this one was just kind of getting away from the idea of making the image precious. So I wasn't afraid to make marks. Um, as you can see, it's a lot of different textures and almost like a different uh, selection of ideas kind of pieced into one. Um, I say it's a break from the idea of like a precious uh, work because I wasn't afraid knowing that the water would wash away the image itself a little bit. Um, I wasn't afraid of kind of splashing water onto it and letting it just bleed a little bit more. Um, the idea was just kind of like 
the organic breakdown of something that's like um, not only like the idea of Medusa turning to stone, which you can see sign, kind of, sort of like the idea of like some of the hands um, turning to stone, but like almost like the idea of like snake venom itself um, with like venom and poison, the uh, degradation of like the flesh almost. So it's like, kind of like I was thinking of what would like just say something that's been turned to stone trapped between like organic and um, inorganic material and like the breakdown in between. So it's like almost like the skeletal figure is just kind of bleeding through the stone. So it's just kind of like a really quick and automatic idea. So it's just like, and then over here is almost like a glass effect of just like um, shattering that uh, kind of like a shattering effect in the foreground. And um, the overall idea was basically like um, the idea of the Medusa itself looking into a mirror and almost like a flash of like that magic that you would think that a magic effect would have on like the Medusa seeing itself or the Gorgon looking at itself in the mirror. Um, so you can see like the wood design there is meant to be like the back of the mirror um, with the glass falling away from it. So that was the initial idea. But yeah, these are just some of the detail here, just real quick. Really happy with the way that this turned out too. Um, it was a lot of fun to work with. All right, then we can return now to a smaller one here. We're almost done. Um, this one here, it is a water-soluble um, graphite on, or carbon block onto a watercolor canvas. Um, so, and then it's topped with like a acrylic uh, metallic marker. Um, I did this just to kind of see like how well the marker itself would work over the top of it once it was done. Um, I'm pretty happy with it and it, from what it looks like it seems to be staying pretty well. I don't see it like chipping or breaking down at all at the moment. Um, I haven't had it for too long but that was the idea is to see how well it keeps up over time. Um, as well as the carbon block as well, like uh, I treated it again with a spray to kind of lock it in so I think that has something to do with it. Um, a lot of what I've been doing is just basically slapdash experimentation and just trying to work in what I can. Again, my kind of, my strengths, uh, are tied in with, I think, drawing the most. So it's really easy for me to just get one tone and to apply that to like the carbon block itself. Cause it's, it just reminds me of like, uh, pencil and paper again. But the cool thing is that with the carbon block, it's almost like marrying the two together, um, when applying the carbon block to even paper, you can take an eraser and it'll pull up some of the carbon block that you've used once it dries. So it's really interesting that it's like a hybrid between the water medium and the graphite itself or the carbon itself. Um, so I have a sepia tone and a black carbon block that I want to use in the future. Um, you'll probably see a lot of that coming up just because it's like I want to get back to the fundamentals so I can really hone in on um, my strengths again, find what I what I want to do with my body of work, and to go from there. But this piece itself is basically drawing back to um, old photos that I used to have growing up in my grandmother's house. Um, they were old photos of our family that were like um, those classic like. Uh, the women were wearing like very tight like buns and like wearing their old garb and um, the men were wearing the suits. It was like all lined up and very stoic and uh, <laughs> expressionless. But um, I remember like before making this, I had a dream about those photos and I just, it was just something in passing that I just thought it would be interesting just to use a subject material to test it out. Cause I was like, um, when I got the block itself, I was like, oh, gray tone. And then I immediately thought of that because it was just kind of coincidentally something I had a dream about previously. So it's just kind of the reason for the subject material. But um, I like the adornment of just kind of like placing something. Here, I'll do it real quick. Um, the adornment of just kind of like placing something that you wouldn't see on somebody who's like, I don't know, classically like, religiously inclined to where they w wouldn't have piercings or they wouldn't have like necessarily flaunting too much opulence at once you know what I mean but um almost like a 
like a Middle Eastern or Eastern style to it at the same time of like this Western culture. Um, I just thought it was an interesting, the clashing of the two. And I just love the quality of like the shining luster of the acrylic marker over the top of it. It just adds like a nice touch to my eyes, but. So yeah, we're gonna move on to the next one real quick. So for this one, um, I never really finished this one because I couldn't remember if I had found this image on a license-free site or if it was something I found on Google. Um, I was going to use this one as a means of selling prints with once I finished it, but I couldn't remember for the life of me where the image came from. So just to be safe, I didn't want to like steal somebody else's image and then end up trying to sell it using my own spin on it like so that's something I'm going to do in the future is like basically rely on my own um source imaging eventually because I've been taking a lot of pictures these past couple of years of uh different like plants and such that I'd like to use so but that's something I want to do is just be super careful and not necessarily just you know cut and paste and just being really careful about somebody else's work. I don't really like the idea of using, even on free sites for like, where they say they're free to use or like, um, I use the site Pexels and that's kind of what I'm referring to. Um, there, a lot of them are just kind of like images that people put up and they say, hey, they're free to use. And like a lot of the time it's like, hey, you know, this is, you know, follow me here or whatever. But um, for this itself, I like the quality of the paints that I used. It is a simple canvas um, from the craft store. Um, I follow somebody on YouTube and they use this paint. Um, it's like a vinyl paint, it's my Miri. Uh, I love the pastel qualities to it. And uh, with this paint in general, um, I like the idea of basically doing almost like a quality effect to where it looks like paint by numbers, but then like making it a little look a little more advanced something about that just kind of like I don't know if it ties into my um newfound like interest in like having geometric effects but I something about it to me just I love the just the simple simplicity of form just pushing and pulling with the color itself um so it's kind of a shame I kind of want to finish this one but again, I don't even know where the image itself is that I'm using, that I use for this. So I wouldn't even know where to begin. I might even just like paint over this and then just use it for something else, so. And for the final piece, drum roll. Uh, this one is, I wanna say my first attempt at painting onto watercolor canvas. Um, I really love the way that this turned out, but at the same time, I don't necessarily like the grittiness that you get when applying too much color to the canvas. So for the next one, I like the idea of using the washes generally for the initial layout, but I want to try doing something in the future of actually incorporating gouache into the image, like somehow. Um, so in the future, for like the darker areas that you see, it would be nice to actually add gouache so that it will be saturated color and it won't necessarily have that like, you know, super, super grainy effect, which kind of is like the canvas itself, so it's unavoidable. But um, yeah, so basically just kind of like up the quality of it a little bit more and have the saturation so that like the values don't necessarily dissipate. Um, but I like the quality of this. I like the color tone. Um, I would like to mute the colors a little bit more in the future. Um, but I do like how I'm in this one, I kind of incorporated more of those neutral colors to kind of even it out a little bit. So it kind of looks like more of a natural degradation, degradation of the, the uh, plant forms there. But yeah, so this was the last piece that I was showing. So yeah, this is the last piece I'll be showing, and this will probably be the last that you see of them between here and my 
Instagram feed for the for quite a long time unless I decide to do like some weird time capsule thing down the road but yeah this is the entire collection of everything that I've basically done in the past couple of years and there we have it everybody uh, this is pretty much uh, as I've said several times the accumulation of everything that I've done so far I hope you've enjoyed I hope you liked uh, some of the things that you've seen sorry again if I've gone on for too long here uh, I'm gonna try to work on the pacing of the videos uh, and it just, to me personally here, it just feels so nice to be able to just accumulate everything and just like get ready to start storing things and putting things away and just like documenting it and archiving it and moving on. To me, it just feels like a kind of like a decluttering of my headspace here. Uh, a lot of what I've been trying to do for such a long time is, you know, get some headway on multiple platforms. And now I can finally say that I'm like, I can feel it in my gut that I'm ready to get going here. I have an idea of where I want to go with this. Um, so I'm super excited to show you what I have in the future, but for now you have pretty much an idea of my style, what I like, I guess, um, a little bit of what I do, I suppose, a little bit of insight, um, but I do intend obviously to polish that and begin to really expand on what it is that I know and even just try to like push my boundaries a little bit and maybe look on, look into the outside of the borders a little bit more of, um, maybe something I'm not interested in. Um, I do plan on doing a lot of experimentation in the future. Uh, but yeah, this is, it's been, it's been a lot here. I can't wait to start cleaning everything again and having my space back into its original shape. It's, it's been a lot to dig through everything. <laughs> but again, I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I hope you have a good one and you'll be hearing from me again soon. And until then, uh, be sure to try to show up for yourself or others here if you can. Um, be safe out there, and I hope you guys all have a good one.